morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So this week we are doing a video on an animal that we have not talked about in quite some time. We're going to talk about the red-eyed crocodile skink and all about how to care for them. I have had my crocodile skink for about two years, a little over two years now. So I feel like I've had her long enough that I can make a care guide. As always, I am most certainly not an expert. If you are getting a crocodile skink or you've just gotten a crocodile skink, make sure to watch other videos that aren't just this one and read other resources so that you can give the best possible care for your crocodile skink. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by the Doobie Dude, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at thedoobiedoo.com. Let's get started. So just a little bit of background information about these guys. They are originally from New Guinea where they can often be found hanging out near water sources because they like it humid. These guys are actually relatively new to the reptile hobby. They were just now introduced into the reptile hobby in the early 90s. They've been here for a little while but nowhere near as long as something like leopard geckos and bearded dragons. Because of this their care is not 100% set in stone. No reptiles care is and it is constantly being updated as we find out more information but changes to care information for these guys might be a little more rapid as we find out more and more information as more and more people keep them. One of those things that is super iffy and every source that I read about them says something different is what kind of lizard these are. Are they nocturnal, diurnal, or crepuscular? But it seems like currently the general consensus is that they are crepuscular. This is a very shy lizard. You are not going to see it a lot. So in captivity, I feel like they're probably just going to come out either when there is food offered to them or when we're not really around so much. These guys get up to about seven to nine inches and they can live up to 10 years if they are captive bred. Wild caught probably can live that much, if not a little bit less, but wild caught crocodile skinks have been known to just die unexpectedly in captivity. So keep that in mind. So talking about how we keep crocodile skinks in captivity. First thing is what size tank do they need? Measurement wise for an adult, we want to keep these guys in a 20 gallon long at least. You can also do very large Sterilite bins for these guys. Just make sure that you are drilling ventilation holes into that bin. But as always, this can be adjusted based on your own specific crocodile skink. If yours is active and it is okay with it, you can move it up to a 40 gallon breeder or a bigger size tank. My crocodile skink doesn't like space and so so she is kept in a Sterilite bin that's about the equivalent to somewhere between a 10 and a 20 gallon tank and this is the maximum size that I have found that she will actually comfortably come out and eat and not just hide all day. So again, adjust it to your crocodile skinks need, but most of the time adults are good in a 20 gallon long. As for temperatures, these guys are super easy. The ambient temperature is good to go at normal room temperature, so in the 70s. And as for a warm spot or a warm side, they're good in the very low 80s. This can be achieved with a very, very small heat bowl, preferably on a thermostat so you can turn it way down, or a heating pad. They're not picky. I use a heating pad on the side of my Sterilite bin, and that has worked perfectly for her just to keep that side a little bit warmer not a lot needed there in terms of temperature. For lighting, this is another one that is not 100% known. When I very first got her, everyone said that they did not need any lights at all. And now people are saying more and more that maybe they can benefit from some UVB lighting. In the first year and a half that I had her, she had no UVB lights and she is fine. She doesn't have any kind of deficiency, no MVD, nothing like that. And then for the last six months, just because I wanted to test it, I did put a UVB light on her tank and nothing has changed at all. So that is a decision that you can look more into and make for yourself. Humidity. This one is very, very, very important. This is the most important thing about their care. They need a high humidity. They are prone to dehydrate very quickly if that humidity is super low. Their humidity needs to stay between the high 70s and the low 90%. That's a very high humidity to maintain at all times. This is one of the biggest reasons that I use a Sterilite bin for her enclosure. You guys know that I love pretty enclosures and filled enclosures and enclosures that I can see. Can't really do that with a Sterilite bin it's very foggy on the outside but I do that so that her humidity can stay up and those foggy walls help her to feel more secure in that bin. I also have to spray down her tank 
every night where some people may have to spray down their tank multiple times a day that sterilite bin means that i only have to spray it down one time and other people like to use foggers in those tanks and foggers look super super cool and they're going to keep that humidity up very important that you have a hygrometer in that tank because again humidity is super super important for you to monitor as for the substrate, I recommend a loose substrate for these guys because humidity, loose substrates are fantastic at keeping up humidity. You can do bioactive substrate for these guys. You can make your own mix from things like Eco Earth and Sphagnum Moss and all natural topsoils that don't have any kind of fertilizers or pesticides or anything like that in it. In researching these guys, I found many sources that said that they don't dig and that they don't burrow and so they didn't necessarily need a loose substrate. My experience there is completely different. Cersei digs all the time. Every tank that I have had her in, the very first thing that she does is she goes into her hide and she digs a little sleeping spot basically out for herself. And she does it in every tank. And that's the first thing she does in every tank. But there are sources out there that say that something like paper towel would also be okay. So enrichment for these guys would be loose substrate so they could dig. Live plants, if you're gonna go bioactive, are fantastic. If not, lots and lots of fake plants. These guys will actually climb a little bit. They are not arboreal, but they'll climb a little bit. So branches for them to climb on, cork bark for them to climb on. You want them to feel secure in that tank. And as for hides, which is another fantastic way to make lots of enrichment, make a lot of little hiding spaces for them and things for them to climb on. They need lots of hides. They need to feel super secure because as counterintuitive as it sounds, the more that they have the opportunity to hide, most likely the more you will see them because they feel safer coming out if they can look over and see somewhere that they can dart. So get as many hiding places in that tank as you can for this shy lizard. Now to talk about feeding these guys, red-eyed crocodile skinks are insectivores. So that means they will only eat insects and they very much prefer live insects. Most of these guys will not eat dead insects because there's no movement there. And live insects as always are just a lot more nutritious. Make sure that you are gut loading the bugs that you feed them. I'll leave a video here to explain that in more depth, but basically you are just feeding your feeders. You're feeding them things like leafy greens or carrots or pre-made gut loading foods that you can buy at pet stores, something to make sure that your animal is getting the healthiest insects possible. And as far as what kind of bugs to feed these guys, you can do doobie roaches, waxworms, mealworms, crickets, and mine absolutely loves black soldier fly larvae, anything like that. It is always best as with any reptile that you change it up some and offer them a variety. But I will also leave a link here with different kinds of feeder bugs, the pros and cons of them, the nutritional information about them. If you need that, that will be there. And with these bugs, you are going to feed your crocodile skink. If they are a baby, you're going to feed them every single day, depending on what it is that you're feeding them. It's usually around five bugs a day. Make sure that they are appropriately sized though. That bug should be able to fit between the space between their eyes. And then as they become adults, you want to transition them to eating about every other day. And depending on what it is that you are feeding, it may be between three to eight bugs every other day. You just kind of learn how much your crocodile skink eats. Make sure all of those bugs though are being dusted with either calcium or vitamins. I just pour a little bit of calcium into that feeding dish or vitamin in that feeding dish and make sure that there's always just a little in there. And then as the bugs slither through or crawl through it, some of the powder will get on them. To me, that's the easiest way to do it. If you do not have a UVB light on your tank, I highly suggest using calcium with D3. And if you do have a UVB light on your tank, then I I would suggest using a calcium without D3. And then you can just do the vitamins about once a week. And very important, you need to have a large water dish in that tank. This water dish is going to serve several purposes. It is going to raise that humidity and keep that humidity up. It's also going to provide a place for them to soak, especially if there is a situation where for some reason your humidity drops below what it's supposed to be. Your crocodile sink will go and soak in that water. They also will come and drink out of this water dish. Keep in mind these guys are often found near water sources. So 
They can swim a little bit. I wouldn't suggest giving them anything crazy. In her previous tank, we had a small pond for her to swim in and we did provide a large centerpiece so that she could get out if she couldn't get out the other way so she didn't accidentally drown or anything. But she would spend so much time in that water and she would just swim around. They will swim if given the opportunity and they can hold their breath for a little bit too. I'm not saying make them a full on paldarium or anything, but make sure their water bowl is big enough for them to at least soak in. As far as their temperament and handling them, again, they are very, very shy. They do not like to be handled. These are one of very few non-gecko lizards that can actually vocalize. And if they feel threatened or they are scared, they will actually bark at you. This is Cersei's go-to move. If we are in her tank and she doesn't want us to be, she will bark. They also will play dead. This is a behavior usually reserved for smaller babies. Cersei at this point doesn't really do this. She just darts. She barks and darts. Babies though will completely play dead. They will go completely still and they'll pretend they're dead until you leave them alone. This is a very stressed out behavior and this is what they will often do if you try to hold them. That is not them wanting to be held. That is them being so scared that they feel like they should pretend that they're dead. This is not going to be a handling lizard. This is going to be a set up a pretty tank and watch them sort of lizard. For those of you that always want to cohab lizards, crocodile skinks can be cohabbed in male-female pairs. Two males will try to fight, two females may start showing dominant behavior and become aggressive towards one another. Keep in mind, if you keep a male and female crocodile skink in a tank, you are probably going to get babies. Luckily, crocodile skinks can only have one egg at a time. Now, over the entire breeding season, they can lay up to six, but it's only one at a time. And super cute about these guys, you can actually keep that baby in the tank with the mom and dad because they will take care of it. They will hang out with this baby crocodile skink. They are one of the very few lizards that will not eat the smaller babies. So super cool there. If you've made it this far in the video and you still want a crocodile skink, then you are probably wondering where to find them. They're not easy to find. Me and Reptilian Den wanted one of these for such a long time and we could never find a captive bred one. There's a plethora of wild caught ones of these out there, but not not captive bred. So we finally found one at a reptile show and when we got her home we were kind of thinking about the situation and feeling like maybe we should get her tested for parasites and we did that and she was swarming with parasites and we had to get all that treated. So make sure that you are getting your red-eyed crocodile skink from a reliable breeder because that's really going to be the only place you're going to be able to get a captive bred one of these. You can find breeders in your area on Facebook and Craigslist. You can find breeders that will ship on Instagram. You can check Morph Market for these guys. Just again, make sure you are checking out the shop and asking lots of questions. Josh's Frog sometimes has captive bred crocodile skinks, but this is definitely going to be something that you are probably going to have to search for. I always suggest buying captive bred for several different reasons. Wild caught crocodile skinks tend to just randomly die, even when people have had them for years and years and years, and that still scares me about Cersei. This is probably due to parasites because wild caught crocodile skinks are also going to have a lot of parasites. So if you get one of these and you know it's wild caught, you need to immediately take it to be treated by a vet or treat it yourself if that's something that you know how to do. They are also a lot more shy than captive bred ones are. So where a captive bred crocodile skinks might come out often, wild caught ones will not they hide all the time because they were not bred into captivity. This is new for them. But whichever route you decide to go down, these guys are also kind of pricey. So you are looking at about the $150 range to the $300 range. Captive bred are going to be more expensive, but keep in mind that wild caught are going to have to be taken to a vet. So this $150 for a wild caught skink may quickly turn into the $300 that you could have paid for a healthy one. But that is it. That is all I have for this video. If you are looking for a really cool dragon looking lizard that you don't have to devote a whole bunch of time to handling down, then the crocodile skink might be what you're looking for. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. Dubia Dude provides very high quality Dubia roaches for your animals and they're delivered directly to your door. So you don't have to go out to a pet store and search for 
for and buy roaches. Doobie roaches are super, super nutritious. They are a lot healthier and more filling than crickets. They don't stink like crickets do and they don't chirp like crickets do. They don't leap out of your hand and escape into your house like crickets do. Doobie roaches are awesome. The Doobie Dudes website is also super easy to navigate. You just click a couple things and you have Doobie Roaches delivered directly to your house and you can get yourself set up on a subscription with them so you have Doobie Roaches periodically coming to your house without having to think about it. The Doobie Dude is also now selling super cute shirts and phone cases with adorable little attitude stricken bearded dragons on them and Doobie Roaches on them. I think they're super cool. If you decide to order from the DooBeeDoo.com make sure to use my code L to save 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Doobie Dude for being a continued sponsor of these videos. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my social and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. And a Wednesday video is coming super soon with exciting announcements. This week's Instagram shout out is for Kiwi the Baby Dragon for following on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff and also commenting on things and also commenting on videos lately. And also your bearded dragon is super cute. And this week's subscriber shout out is for Shannon Taylor for commenting on last week's video. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. But the information but the information for these guys, but the care information for these guys, the information that comes in for <sighs> these guys in captivity. So talking about how we keek <laughs> my crocodile skink barometer in that tank because very important you have very very important that you have and she digs a little Oh wait, I just completely combined all that. No. <laughs> what are you looking for, a little spider? What are you looking for, a little spider? Okay. Um. Is that it? Oh, shoutouts.